breaking news tonight on the crazy prison escape in Alabama. Have you been following the story? It's insane. We were going to just tell you a garden variety boy meets girl, boy's convicted of murder, boy shoots dog, boy falls in love with older lady, and they leave in her orange car. But no, everything's changed. Police say the escaped convict, he's in custody, and his prison guard lover, she's in the hospital after she reportedly shot herself in the friggin' head. According to investigators, Vicki White helped Casey White, no relation yet, uh, Walt out of the Lauderdale County Detention Center in Alabama. <laughs> They're not related, but reportedly had a special relationship. They have been on the run for nearly two weeks. They didn't get that far. We just learned they were spotted 300 miles north at a hotel in Evansville, Indiana. Great state. Uh, then there was a high-speed chase, a rollover crash. Casey White was captured. He's six nine. And the prison guard, Vicky, she was taken to the hospital with what appears to be a self-inflicted gunshot wound. So what happens now? Joining me is former assistant FBI director Chris Zwecker. Welcome back to the show, sir. Hey, Kennedy. How are you doing? This is a crazy story, but it's not totally unusual for these lonely lady guards to fall in love with some silver-tongued sociopath. Uh, they help them escape, and it never ends well. These two got as far as Evansville, Indiana. We were hearing reports earlier today that a car linked to them had been found there. So what went down, my friend? Well, with all this publicity, somebody called in a tip. Uh, the the, the uh, marshal service had determined that a car was stolen in the area where the, the first car was abandoned. So they've been following that lead, probably put the information out to law enforcement uh, at all points, you know, within a several hundred miles. Someone spotted it up there in Evansville, Indiana, and they apparently tried to chase, you know, like he did before. He tried to get away from the police. Vicky was driving, and they, of course, result in a crash. Now, in the ultimate irony, she shot herself, and you would, have th you would have thought that Casey White, who said he would never be captured alive, mm. wanted to be killed by police, would have been the person that committed or tried to commit suicide. So there's, there's a, lot of, a lot of big question marks here yes. that need to be answered. And when he tried to kill his ex-girlfriend, that was the incident where he shot and killed the family dog, uh, fired at her four times, didn't hit her. Both of her kids were in the house. He told her that he wanted to die by cop. He wanted to end her life and then end his own in a hail of police bullets. That didn't happen. He told his ex-girlfriend that if he ever got out, he was going to come find her and kill her. So she obviously has been terrified this whole time. But that six-foot-nine lumbering giraffe, uh, they, they didn't make it very far. When I heard that they were in Evansville earlier today, I'm like, oh, they're in Canada now. These two are so smart. Yeah, they planned. They apparently just didn't plan well. I think they got as far as their collective intelligence could get, could get them. They, they, apparently, the only plan was to hop from hotel to hotel, which was a, a terrible plan. I, I would have expected them to have already rented a place somewhere in a, you know, in a remote area and just laid low. And that's what I've been saying all along. So I'm one of the most surprised people right now that they were out and about moving and, and showing themselves. Here he is, six foot nine. He gets captured on video. A <laughs> uh, lot of ironies here. Like Bigfoot. It's just a big, lumbering dum-dum yeah. just trolling around with uh, the older lady. She's 56. He's 38. You know what they say, old chicks will teach you stuff, but apparently she didn't teach him any survival skills because now they're both in the hospital. So what kind of charges are these two facing? Yeah, first, I, let me add that his attorney, his own attorney, said he can't function out in public. He needs his meds. Uh, if he's off his meds, you know, all bets are off. Um, his punishment is he's never going to see the light of day. I mean, I hope they put him in a jail there where they actually follow procedures. Uh, the county jail, just that's not the place for him. He needs to go to a state pen, and, and uh, I suspect that he will this time, and he won't bounce from county jail to county jail. He was clever enough to get himself transferred, yeah, maybe even to where she uh, was. giving it, you know, yeah, yeah, to a, he, and, you he know, confessed to a murder he might not have even committed. Exactly. So he could be close exactly. to her so she could get him out of that facility. And she's like, oh, yeah, I'm taking him for a mental health eval. You know, uh, I'm not going to be back after this. I got a doctor's appointment. Everyone's like, okay, that sounds good. You're supposed to have someone else, Vicky, but you look like Kato Kalin, and he looks like Jim from the office after a meth bender. So we're going to go ahead and let you go. 
Uh, people get mad when I do that accent, but that has nothing to do with the region. I love Alabama very much, even though some of the prison guards they hire are really stupid. Um, Chris Walker, thank you so much for your expertise and patience. We thank appreciate you. it. You rolled with it beautifully tonight.